Have you ever wondered why we're stuck in a system where we have to work for a living just to survive? It's not just something that I've asked myself many times, but it often comes up in a comment section. I, like you, can't help but wonder, is it really necessary? And so today, I wanted to dive into the existential question of wage slavery. I believe that there are three fundamental reasons why wage slavery exists. Let's start with history. Think of the assembly line. Back in the day, it revolutionized manufacturing. Suddenly, products could be made faster and cheaper than ever before. But this efficiency came at a cost, the dehumanization of workers. They became mere cogs in the machine, working tirelessly for the profit of others. Now, I will still argue that technology is important for society as a whole, because before the Industrial Revolution, life was really tough. Most people lived below the poverty line. But the bright minds of our society invented efficient ways to leverage our output. And we have done great so far. And we are almost at the point of inventing real AI that will fix all our problems in the future. But the question is still, does the technological advancement of the world make us happier as people? Now, if the answer is yes, then, you know, by all means, let's just continue. But my thesis for the content that I produce is that we have reached a point where we only work to drive profit and lifestyle obsessions to newer heights. Let's take the company Apple, for example. The drive for increased profit is for the shareholders. But if we forget about the stock price, if, if the board decided that, hey, we're doing all right, we don't have to grow anymore. We have more than we could ever spend. Let's not expand. Let's just focus on making iPhones and MacBooks better and cheaper without really thinking about increasing market shares. Let's think of the greater good instead of profit. Now, this fantasy will unfortunately never happen. Human greed will drive all societies into the ground. We have seen it happen so many times to so many great civilizations. The Portuguese fleet, the Roman Empire, Napoleon and France. To paraphrase the movie Limitless, let's pop a beer and lift off the interest. Man's destiny seems to be reaching beyond its needs and risking losing everything. Now, everything in history tells us this. Every giant empire failed because of this. And so, maybe it's time to consider that and finding a better way. Now, I don't have the recipe for how to achieve that, but I do know that what we do now will not work in the long run. Now, let's consider biology. We're all just animals at the end of the day, right? From a biological standpoint, our main goal is to survive and reproduce. But why? Is there some grand design behind it all? Or are we just products of evolution? It's a question worth pondering. Now, some would argue that humans are nothing more than DNA carriers. Our biological purpose is to carry our DNA to the next generation. But it's actually something that I often think about when people discuss the urgency of, you know, improving the climate, saving the planet, saving future generations of humans, animals, and plants. While all that sounds obviously important, I still ponder if we really owe it to future generations 10,000 years from now. Do we owe our lives to humans who lived 10,000 years ago? Did they really care or think about us? Probably not. They were probably just concerned with their own well-being. And so what if it all goes extinct? The dinosaurs got extinct, but it didn't end life on Earth. There have been plagues, ice ages, asteroids, and volcanoes that have destroyed the majority of life on Earth. And yet, life always seems to find a way. 
Now, I know I have criticized society or at least its wage slavery, and I stand by it, but you also see that I've tried to provide value because on some instinctive level, I think we all truly want to improve society and help our fellow humans. I suspect that it's in our DNA to safeguard the future of our species. The biological aspect is important. It's why we have hierarchies in society, something that Dr. Jordan Peterson made me aware of. It's not just some social construct. Our drive for building hierarchies has been in our DNA for millions of years. That's a fact that we can't really ignore. But what does all of this have to do with wage slavery? Well, I'm just considering the philosophical aspect of prioritizing a global civilization that, statistically speaking, has very little chance of surviving. And so, when society pushes humans to live for the greater good of mankind, I sort of feel like it's false propaganda, much like being a patriot to your country. So many people have given their lives for their countries, mostly forced under the propaganda umbrella of love of country. And I think that political figures and companies rely on these instinctive forces to secure their own agendas. And so I'm just saying, don't fall for it. The truth is, I really believe in a more hedonistic life philosophy. We only have one life, so why should we waste that opportunity for anything in the future that will not care or be grateful for our sacrifice? Now, if you think that I'm wrong about this, let me ask you this. When was the last time you sat in a car and were grateful for the guy who invented the wheel 5,000 years ago? My point is, that guy didn't do it for you and you have no obligation to people 5,000 years in the future. He prioritized his happiness and well-being on Earth. And so that's what I think that we should do. Now, maybe you think that I'm wrong about this and you want to be a part of a society that improves life for future generations. That's great. I'm sure they will sit comfortably in their spaceships thinking about the people who sacrifice their lives to make them more comfortable. And now, let's talk about the headless paradox. Have you ever seen the movie The Cube? It's from 1997. You probably haven't. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And it's a bit of a B film, yet I regard it as a cult classic because I think it really shows how people are genetically designed to do things without a purpose. Let me explain. The story is about five people who wake up in a cubicle room with six doors, all sides up and down. Regardless of which door they pick, they end up in another similar room, as some rooms have traps. And so the movie is about this maze of cubes. Now, it's a kind of a mind-bending thriller that explores the absurdity of existence. In a way, our lives can feel a bit like that. Trapped in a system we didn't create, with no clear way out. Now, throughout the movie, the characters discuss who built it and what put them there, and all sorts of theories pop up. Whether it's some sadistic Dr. Evil or a government-funded social experiment or even aliens, but the best theory works as a metaphor for life and society itself, that it was built just to have something to build, that there is no agenda or plan. Whoever built it, built it so it could be used and put in there because if nobody is using it, it will be pointless. Now, I feel that society at large is also a headless paradox. Some people believe in conspiracy theories that the world is run by some ancient secret society. While I do love conspiracy theories a lot, <laughs> I don't believe that there is a grand plan behind it all. We often love the idea that everything is part of a well thought out plan. You might want to believe that the TV was invented to control society. However, it was simply created by an inventor who enjoyed inventing things and wanted to make a profit. You might also want to believe 
that society has the purpose of safeguarding the future of the human race. Well, the truth is, society is just people trying to survive and be happy. And whenever people try to sell you the idea that society is something bigger or more important than that, expect them to ask for money or your vote. And so, finally, why does wage slavery exist? Some argue that it's necessary for society to thrive. But I ask, what is the point of society thriving if it means sacrificing our freedom and dignity? It's a question we should all consider. Do we live so we can work? Or do we work so we can live? It's the most important question. Yet so many never ask themselves that. As always, Thank you for listening. Do me a favor and tap that like button to show your support. Subscribe if you're interested in more content like this. Until next time, stay hungry, relentless, and strong in your journey of escaping wage slavery. Bye. Oh, you're still here. Oh, that's right. It's the behind the scenes vlog. This section of the video is for my subscribers who might be interested in more personal things that I share about me. Well, my friends, as you can see, I made it back from Stockholm and it was sort of fun meeting my mom and my friend. I mean, almost got mugged, long story. And the train ride was fun as well. I don't know about you. I personally really love long train rides. I know some people hate it, but it really calms me, you know? And so now I'm back. And I've noticed that my channel is seeing massive decrease in views and subscribers. And I expected that to happen. And as I said before, I have a lot of experience with YouTube and I'm sort of used to it. But it stings a bit, not gonna lie. I'm only human after all. Obviously, it's more fun to see your channel grow. And I posted an article recently about the thing that social media makes us forget that the numbers take place over impact in people's lives. So a question that I often ask is, would you rather share a valuable video with 10 people where it improves their lives? Or would you rather get 1 million views on a video where you set a smartphone on fire for pure entertainment value? Now it's not that one of these options is the wrong option. It's just that content creators like myself, we strive more for the views. And it's just an aspect of the game, I suppose. So I'm starting a new work assignment next week, and hopefully it will be the last one before I leave wage slavery forever. I'm going to be sort of project managing a warehouse transition. And I sort of wish I cared more about it, you know, but to me, it's sort of like the cube movie. There is no point to it. So, they want to move from one warehouse to a bigger warehouse, improving efficiency for the sake of efficiency. Now, during the interview, I really tried my best to pretend to be intrigued by the process, but, you know, I really didn't care. <laughs> uh, being a consultant um, means that I've been going to a lot of interviews, and I think I've actually mastered the art of acing an interview. Maybe I should make a course on Skillshare about that. Now you might be concerned that, huh, what if the company finds out about this video and fires you because of it? I hope they do. <laughs> Honestly, it would be great, but unfortunately, I'm not so lucky. Anyway, that was all for today. Hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.